Look, an eye protected by its eyelid. As it blinks, the eyelid covers it with a light film of tears. The iris, a beautiful green in this case, is a muscle which contracts like the diaphragm of a camera, letting more or less light come through the pupil, the black hole in the middle. Following the path of the light into the eye, we go through the crystalline lens, which is transparent and therefore invisible on this image. We're now facing the retina, a fine membrane lining the back of the eye, essentially made of sensory cells and irrigated by many vessels. The white circle in the middle is the area where the optical nerve leaves to go to the brain. The red mark on the right is the fovea. It mainly contains cones which are color sensitive cells. There are other cells present on the retina, they're called rods and they enable us to see in poor light. At night, it's thanks to these rods that we can still distinguish outlines, but not colors. As we move towards the periphery, our microscope enables us to see a cross-section of the retina. There are many more rods than anywhere else. You can recognize them by their elongated shape. It's at this very place that low-intensity light is received from the outside. It's then transformed into nerve impulses. In each rod, we can see a pile of small strips, which are the extension of the cell's membrane. Folded up to increase the reception area, these strips contain a pigment hidden in their folds called rhodopsin. It's a very special pigment. Its structure changes as it receives a luminous signal. It then triggers a series of chemical reactions, resulting in the emission of a nerve signal that the brain can interpret. The eye is a direct window of the brain onto the world. Our microscope has now reached its limits. Beyond this, nothing more is visible for the moment.